APCO Basic Science Video Topic Cervical Intraepithelial Neoplasia Worldwide, cervical cancer is the fourth most common cancer among women. We now know that virtually all cases of cervical cancer are caused by HPV or human papillomavirus. Globally, HPV is the most common sexually transmitted infection, and it is estimated that at least 80% of sexually active women and men are exposed to HPV once in their lifetime. In developed countries like the United States, screening with pap smear make most precancers like cervical intraepithelial neoplasia, or CIN, of the cervix identifiable at states when they can be easily treated, decreasing the incidence of cervical cancer. The objectives of this video are to describe the histopathology of the cervix, describe the histopathology of CIN and cancer, and understand the role of HPV in causing CIN and cancer. There's a lot to cover with this topic to review pap smear screening guidelines and management of abnormal pap smears and dysplasia, please review the APCO clinical video found here. Let's start by reviewing the anatomy of the cervix. The ectocervix is covered in squamous epithelium, seen in red on this illustration, and is the part of the cervix that is seen on speculum exam. In green, the endocervix, including the cervical canal, is covered with mucus-secreting columnar epithelium. The squamocolumnar junction is where the two types of epithelium meet. On a microscopic level, the endocervix has simple columnar epithelium on a thick lamina propria with mucus secreting cervical glands. The ectocervix has non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. In this slide, squamous epithelium is seen near the top with columnar epithelium below. The SCJ is where the two meet. Now, let's look at the cervix in a different way. This is a schematic of the cervix as you would see it when doing a speculum exam. Let's take a moment to define the transformation zone and discuss its importance. On this schematic, the original SCJ is highlighted. The location of the SCJ varies with age and hormonal status. During adolescence and pregnancy, the SCJ averts outward to the ectocervix. In low estrogen states, such as menopause, the SCJ regresses back into the endocervical canal. Squamous metaplasia is the normal replacement of columnar by squamous epithelium on the cervix. This process creates a widening band of tissue between the original columnar epithelium and the squamous epithelium, known as the transformation zone. Let's pause, read, and apply. Where does cervical neoplasia develop? Cervical neoplasia almost always develops within the transformation zone, usually near or at the current SCJ. Immature cells are the most vulnerable to the oncogenic effects of HPV and co-carcinogens. Let's meet our patient. She is a 25-year-old who presents to clinic for colposcopy. Her pap smear demonstrated low-grade intraepithelial neoplasia. She is a smoker and has not received the human papillomavirus vaccine. She asks you what caused the abnormal pap smear. You counsel her that it is most likely secondary to human papillomavirus or HPV. What do we know about HPV? It is a double-stranded circular DNA virus with seven early genes, E1 to E7. These proteins are involved in viral gene regulation and cell transformation. There are also two late genes, L1 and L2. These proteins form the shell. Illustrated is a cervical squamous cell with the nucleus represented by a circle. Neoplastic transformation occurs when HPV integrates into the genome. Viral integration of HPV disrupts the E1, E2 open reading frames, and there is loss of transcriptional regulation of E6 and E7 proteins. E6 binds P53 protein, which is a regulator of cell growth and tumor suppressor gene. The binding of E6 to P53 causes degradation of P53 which causes unchecked cellular cycling and accumulation of mutations without repair. E7 binds retinoblastoma or RB protein. RB protein halts cell growth and induces cell apoptosis and binds E2F transcription factor to make it inactive. The binding of E7 to RB causes release of transcription factor E2F, which promotes cell cycle progression. This combination of E6 and E7 causes immortalization of infected cell lines. Many times, these infected cells are recognized by the immune system and destroyed. However, sometimes infected cells are not destroyed and persistent infection occurs. As mentioned previously, HPV is very common. Over 40 mucosal HPV types can infect the genital tract, but not everyone that has been infected with HPV has CIN. This depends on both the subtype of the virus as well as the persistence of the infection. 
The subtype of the HPV determines the oncogenic potential. Low-risk HPV types do not integrate into the host genome and include HPV type 6 and 11. Together, these two subtypes account for 90% of genital warts. High-risk HPV types are more likely to persist and progress to cancer. High-risk types include 16, 18, 31, 33, 35, 39, 45, and 51. 16 and 18 account for 70% of cervical cancers. Persistence of infection also increases risk for CIN. More than 80 to 90% of HPV infections clear within two to five years. Risks for persistence include older age, high risk subtypes of HPV, and duration of infection. Let's go back to our patient. Because her pap smear shows LGSIL, she undergoes colposcopy. You obtain a biopsy. This is the histopathology from her cervical biopsy. This is consistent with CIN1 from the Bethesda Classification System, or LSIL from the last or lower anal genital squamous terminology system. We will review this terminology in a moment. For our patient, this is considered a low-grade change with mild atypical cellular changes in the lower one-third of the epithelium. Zooming in, coelocytes are commonly seen. They have nuclear enlargement with a halo. Most of these lesions regress on their own. When we look at the classification systems, Bethesda classification of CIN1 is equivalent to last system's LSIL. CIN3 is equivalent to HSIL. For these lesions, 12 to 40 percent progress to cancer. There's typically a slow progression to cancer, taking 8 to 13 years after diagnosis of a high-grade lesion. For CIN2, there has been lack of reproducibility. Therefore, P16 staining was added in the last system. If negative, the histology is consistent with L-cell, and if P16 positive, this is consistent with H-cell. For CIN2, 22% progress to CIN3, and 5% progress to cancer. You can see high-grade, atypical cellular changes confined to the lower two-thirds of the epithelium. Again, if P16 is positive, this is consistent with H-cell in the last system. For CIN3, there are high-grade atypical cellular changes to greater than two-thirds of the full thickness of the epithelium. In cancer, malignant cells invade the underlying stroma. In this image of keratinizing squamous cell carcinoma, malignant squamous cells can form irregular nests that invade the stroma, with keratin pearls in the center. For our patient, you tell her that recommendation is for repeat pap smear one year, because CIN1 or LSIL will likely resolve on its own. Let's pause, read, and apply. Why is CIN1 or LSIL more likely to regress? In CIN1 or LSIL, HPV persists in the cytoplasm and there is no viral integration. It typically represents an active infection in which HPV is replicated but not integrated into the genome. While CIN refers to squamous abnormalities, there are a subset of abnormalities from glandular disease. While squamous tumors account for 70% of cervical cancers, adenocarcinoma accounts for 25%. Glandular cervical neoplasia includes adenocarcinoma in situ and adenocarcinoma. Abnormalities in adenocarcinoma include nuclear crowding and enlargement, nuclear atypia, and increased mitoses in the glands. HPV also plays a primary role in adenocarcinoma, with HPV 16 and 36% of adenocarcinoma and HPV 18 and 37 percent. She asks you what she can do to help HPV clear and to prevent future exposure to HPV. You recommend that she quit smoking. Cigarette smoking is a cofactor in the pathogenesis of CIN, as breakdown products of cigarette smoke are concentrated in the cervical mucus, inducing abnormalities and decreasing local immunity. Other cofactors include immunosuppression, long-term oral contraceptive use, and history of a herpes simplex virus and chlamydia. While long-term oral contraceptive use has been shown to be a cofactor, their use may just be a marker of exposure to HPV rather than a causal factor. You also recommend the HPV vaccine. You let her know that while it will not cure the HPV type or types she currently has, it will help protect against strains that she has not been exposed to. The vaccine contains inactive HPV capsid proteins, L1, which produce neutralizing antibodies. The 9-valent HPV vaccine targets 6 and 11, as well as 7 high-risk types including 16 and 18. This concludes the AFCO Basic Science video on CIN. We have covered a lot, including histology of the cervix and squamocolumnar junction, the role of HPV on the cervix, 
the histopathology of CIN, and prevention strategies. Music